The Greek New Testament is a recent invention? Hmm. I was reading a book by uh, Dr. Sam Gipp, and he made this point, and he said, what you have to understand is when people talk about the original Greek, um, they're, in their mind, they're picturing some kind of a book that contained all of the original autographs. And they think to themselves that this would have been the authoritative standard. God had this thing worked out. The early Christians, they saw this amazing book and you know every time they put it on a table the light a sunbeam came in through the window and kind of illuminated it and oh, oh and the angels sang <laughs> you know sarcasm um but you know people think yes there was this the original the original greek it was there it was a beautiful book it was amazing it's what led you know early christians to do such great works and everything for god uh well i hate to burst your bubble but that book never existed okay uh not in the first century uh, not at any time in church history was there ever a point in time when you had all the different uh, New Testament letters all compiled into one book. Didn't happen. And um, Sam Gipps' point was that uh, this Greek New Testament really didn't exist until Des Desiderius Erasmus came along and made the very first Greek Latin text um, using manuscripts from the Orthodox Church not the Roman Catholic Church, and he used Greek Orthodox uh, manuscripts, and he compiled a Latin slash Greek text, because see, at the time, Jerome's Latin Vulgate would have been the Holy Bible of the Catholic Church, and if you understand that, Jerome's Latin Vulgate was actually a new version at one point in time, because if you go back to the, I think it was the second century, they actually had... Um, the old Latin Vulgate. And the old Latin Vulgate uh, was used by the, the people for a long time. And it would have been based on these, on this, you know, Syrian type text. The text that goes back to Antioch, that our King James Bible ultimately goes back to that as well. And so that old Latin Vulgate was eventually replaced by Jerome's Latin Vulgate. So he kind of took the, the term Vulgate and supplanted the old Latin Vulgate. Very interesting. So uh, if you study the Bible version issue, you will see that what we currently deal with has been done over and over again throughout the last 2,000 or so years, essentially. Um, but up until Erasmus, uh, Gibbs' point was that there really wasn't anything as a compiled Greek New Testament in a book form. Um, and uh, you know, some people would probably argue and they would say, well, in the Greek Orthodox Church, they had the Greek New Testament, so that's not a valid point. We, you know, the Greek Orthodox Church had it going the whole way back to the first century. Well, I would contest that and say, uh, more than likely, they might have had different manuscripts, but they probably did not have an actual in book form. You say, what's the point you're trying to make? The point I'm trying to make here is, people have this weird idolatry that the Greek text, oh, study the Greek, oh, the Greek, the Greek, the Greek. But yet, if it was so important to God, why did he wait until the 16th century to have it compiled for the first time in a book form? It's kind of weird. And, you know, it wasn't as if, you know, well, Erasmus, he... he uh, collated the different manuscripts, and then he, he made this Greek text, and then it went another couple hundred years after that, and people eventually started to sort of warm up to the idea of putting it into English or something like that. Uh, no. Um, once Erasmus got his text done, you had Martin Luther in Germany making his New Testament translation, and then you had um, William Tyndale in England making his. So two of the greater Bibles back in those years were done from Erasmus's work very quickly, very rapidly. And of course you had John Wycliffe before then, back in the 14th century, the early 1300s, making his, but that was just a translation of Jerome's Latin Vulgate. The right mindset, he wanted to get the Bible into the hands of the common people, but he used a corrupt source. Okay, uh, that never works out. I have the right thing. I want to be able to get the, the Bible into the hands of the common man. Okay, but what is the source? If you're using Vaticanus and Sinaiticus, it's a corrupt source. Um, and you don't have to be a, a real hardcore scholar to understand that. You know, you have to understand the fact that um, 
you know, if you are uh, using the minority text, less than 1% of extant Greek manuscripts, and you're saying that this is going to produce the best translation, um, that's not exactly true. Okay? Uh, again, I can't get into the whole manuscript evidence thing here, but, you know, I said the point already, but I'll reiterate it one more time. If the Greek, the Greek New Testament is so important to God, then why did he wait so many years? You know, essentially, um, you know, 1,400 years, essentially, from the time the New Testament was completed, uh, around there, to put the Greek into a New Testament, that people could get it and read it for themselves. Kind of weird. Um, so there's this weird idolatry about Greek over English. And yet you can very clearly see that the English Bible and the Greek New Testament came out very similar time. Not a huge big difference between the two. Hmm. So, um, I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on the Bible version issue, but I'll put some stuff here at the end that you can study it more. Um, uh, it's not... There, you can get into the different variant readings between the different manuscripts and whatever else, but the main issue with the Bible version thing is about a mindset. Dare I say, a philosophy. Philosophy on the part of the new versions, certainly. And that is that... The, the mindset of the New Version people is that the Bible is like any other work of history. It's called ta naturalistic textual criticism, whereby you can say, well, um, we can critique it. We can, there's no supernatural uh, authorship in terms of it was there in the first century with the original autographs, and then it just disappeared after that. And God's hand came off of it, and, you know, it's just kind of, limped along over the years and whatever else, and God hasn't done anything to preserve his word. It's kind of a weird God. He can make all this out here and run the world and everything, but yet he can't preserve a book. Kind of odd. Um, but that's the mentality of these people. And if you find a new manuscript, well, then you should read the new manuscript and you should say, okay, we can make these changes. The Bible is never complete. The Bible is never settled. It's always in a state of flux. It can change. It can be this way. A better translation would be that way. And it's just, it's a system of doubt. That's what the new version mentality leads to. And I've, you know, corrected people um, different times with, you know, well, the Bible says such and such. And they say, well, actually a better translation would be, well, that's the King James reading. And actually the, and they'll say some other thing and they're teaching heresy when they do it. It's kind of weird. You know, and a lot of times, too, another one that I've seen is people will say, well, we know now that the Greek is such and such. Uh, no, you don't know any, anything of the kind. Okay, um, there are 40, over 40 different Greek texts, all right, and some of them have multiple editions. Take the Nestle Lalonde text, there's 28 editions of that. So, oh, the Greek, okay, the is a definitive article in front of a singular word, the Greek. That means one. Unless you have modern English, then you can mean anything by that. The Greek can mean, you know, 20,000 different uh, leaves on a tree or something. I mean, it, it just identifies anything. It's insanity. But if you are a sane, rational person, um, the only ones that can really say the Bible says are those who hold to one Bible. Um, and that's the difference. Um, again, you know, answer, you know, uh, the what's the two verses I'm thinking of in Proverbs? One says about, um, answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. And then it says, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. So, there's two different situations there. UTV's going by. Um, there's two different situations. Okay, one situation is that if you have a fool, an Alexandrian new version fool, don't waste your time on them. Okay, they're just going to try to get you into this whole thing of, well, 
the, the Greek word Pascha should be always translated as Passover, and the King James gets it in there when it says Easter, and, and blah, blah, blah. And, and you say, well, yes, well, what about this? And what about, oh, yes, but what about this? And, and they're just trying to waste your time. Um, and they'll do this, the agape phileo thing, and, and um, you know, the Johannine comma, and 1 John 5, 7. And just doubt. They'll sow doubt into your mind. Um, and if you just say, well, I believe it, the King James Bible is God's perfect book. Oh, huh, you're not very scholarly. And whatever. Um, it's insanity. Um, but forgetting my point here that I was trying to make, but the, you know, the main issue is, okay, answer a fool. Um, that you're not to answer a fool according to their folly, lest, you know, you be like them. Basically, they, they bring you down into their level of foolishness. You have that when you start to get into the d debating of how Greek words should be translated, how Hebrew words, this would be a better way to translate it and whatever else. Um, and most of the argument in the Bible version issue thing, by the way, is in the New Testament. You don't see a whole lot of arguing over the New Testament. It's there, but it's not nearly as important to them as the New Testament. Because that's where it talks about Jesus Christ. The New Testament is a better testament than the Old Testament. If you don't understand that. But then you have the opposite, the reverse. Answer not a fool according to his folly. But then it goes on to say, answer a fool according to their folly, lest they be wise in their own conceit. Uh, you have to break down that conceit, that conceited attitude. They say, well, actually, I believe that the King James Bible is an error in here and here and there and there and, and whatever. And you say, oh, okay, really? Well, you, you think that way. Okay. Um, what is God's perfect word then? What's the final authority? Well, the Greek. The Greek is God's final authority. Oh, what's the Greek? Could you please define the Greek? Since there are 40 different Greek texts out there and multiple editions of each of those 40 Greek texts. What is the Greek? Well, what I'm saying, oh, you're so dumb. Uh, what I'm saying is, you know, I mean the original Greek. Uh, you mean the original autographs? When did, the, when did that ever exist in a book? And why is it that God didn't see any need to have this Greek New Testament being circulated until the 16th century? You know, well, it was there in the Greek Orthodox Church. Okay, then they hide it away. It's hidden behind their icons and their statues and all their stupid big temples and everything else and all their religious traditions that aren't in Scripture, just like the Catholics. Um, hopefully you see what I'm saying there. Um, remember that two... The two standards there of Scripture. There are times that you don't answer the, the fool. Don't waste your time arguing with these people. They get into all the Greek stuff and whatever else. I mean, you can get drawn away into that thing. And all, I've seen guys, brethren, that I've been in ministry with in the past, and they'll go and they'll get a Greek textus receptus, and they'll get a different lexicons, and they'll get into all this different stuff. You don't know why the King James translators chose different words. You can't understand all of that stuff. These guys were tremendous scholars. And to say that you could somehow get people today to be on their level, that's nonsense. They were living in a, in a pollution-free, everything was organic food uh, kind of world. Living, you know, complete natural fibers. Uh, There's no electronic smog, no radiation, no, you know. I mean, talk about having a good, clean mind, a healthy mind. I mean, and like any, not like anything we could ever experience. And we can somehow achieve that. Yeah, right. But um, don't get wasting your time with the whole Greek thing and the Hebrew. And well, actually, the word here could be translated in the word, the, you know. No. Um, don't answer a fool according to their folly. And the second part of that is answer them according to their folly. If they come along and they start this whole, well, actually, a better translation would be. So, oh, really? Um, so, do you have a translation that fits your better translation? And they, they say, well, yes, actually, the New American Standard Bible is a much better, much more accurate Bible. You say, oh, it's accurate, is it? Really? Um, does it include the deuterocanonical books in it that are part of the inspired scriptures in Vaticanus and Sinaiticus, you know, the two oldest and best manuscripts that they're supposedly accurately translating? Um, does it include those? Oh, uh, well, uh, well, the King James Bible had them in, too, uh, between the Old and the New okay. Testament. That's correct not as part of the inspired text like Sinaiticus and Vaticanus have. Why doesn't the New American Standard Version follow that? 
I'm just asking because I'm curious what your standard is. <laughs> Answer the fool according to their folly. You see what I'm saying? Um, oh, you don't believe in the King James Bible. Okay. Um, then what's the standard? What's your standard? How do you know that you're saved? Well, I put my faith in Jesus. I don't put my faith in a book. Okay. How do you know that you, you have the right Jesus? What's your standard? Who is Jesus to you? Explain Jesus to me without referring to the scriptures, please. You know, you see the problem? Um, well, I believe in the Trinity. I believe in the most holy Trinity and, and whatever. Okay, you do? Really? All right. Well, could you please explain to me where the Bible says three persons? Or God the Spirit or God the Son? God the Father, yeah. But God the Spirit, God the Son, where does it say that? And um, how are we made in God's image and after his likeness if God is three persons but we're only one person? I'd like to know your explanation. Well, your belief, no, 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 let's not talk about my belief. You already established that you don't believe what I believe, so you tell me what you believe. Fool, answer me according to your folly. <laughs> so, but uh, just wanted to put this video out quick here because I thought that was a really good thing which I never even thought about that before. I thought, well, that's a good point. Um, no Greek New Testament existed in, for the hands of the common man before the 16th century, the early 1500s, when Erasmus brought it out. I don't think God cares a whole lot about the original Greek, you know? And again, we get caricatured to this whole thing. Well, you're King James only. Therefore, you know, you believe that nobody but, you know, English speakers has the word of God. Uh, well, never said that. I uh, don't believe that. Um, there are translations that can be made into other languages that match the Receptus, Textus Receptus, and the King James Bible readings. That's fine. You could you know, take the King James Bible and translate it into any language that you speak out there. Absolutely fine. Um, but, again, you have this whole problem of, oh, you know, so you're saying that... Uh, um, you know, this caricature that they try to do, oh, you're King James only, that means you only believe in English or something. No, because I can read the New Testament and the book of Acts, chapter 2, God had them speaking in different tongues. And they called it the word of God that they were hearing. So before the New Testament's even finished, God's already saying, hey, I'm going to put my word into other tongues, mm -hmm. other languages. Okay, that's what tongues means in your King James Bible. It doesn't mean some special, you know, blibbity blobbity that the charismatics do to get money. So, but anyhow, just wanted to put that out there. Uh, some big studies coming out here soon. I was working on a, another project all day today. And um, my ability to work on projects uh, is severely limited by how hot it is. And um, when it gets really hot and it's 80 some degrees outside or 90 degrees outside, my productivity goes down. My little gauge could be like that. But um, have some sermon notes written up for some good studies to come out with. And I have some other things I'm going to be doing. So please do keep us in your prayers. I always want to say that. Thank you to everybody out there that supports us. Really do appreciate that. Let's hold each other up in prayer. Stand by the word of God. Remember, the Bible is the only connection uh physical connection that we have to God in this world. The only thing physical that we have. Don't let anybody take it from you. Okay, yes, it's a spiritual book, but you can physically hold it. The scriptures are there for a comfort for you. It's, uh, we, you know, through comfort of the scriptures the Bible talks about. Um, somebody takes that from you, then what do you have? So, that will be it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll uh, see you in the next video.